on um, Zoom, and there might be some more coming in too. I've got a Bible reading this morning from Psalm 59, and it talks about the people at the time having the same problems as we have these days, and they're probably more dangerous these days, but um, this uh, few verses will explain that. Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from those who work evil. And save me from bloodthirsty men. For behold, they lie in wait for my life. Fierce men stir up strife against me. For no transgression of, my, of sin of mine, O Lord, for no fault of mine, they run and make ready. Awake, come and meet me and see. The Lord God of hosts, our God of Israel, rouse yourself to punish all the nations. Spare none of those who treacherously plot evil. Okay, um, we'll just have our first song now, uh, and we've got some really good songs today.
And that was only the first one, there's three more to come. John, can you come and give us our announcements, please? Well, good morning. Um, not surprising, we're, we are down in numbers this week because of the rain. Uh, it's quite a few adults not being able to hear this morning. So it's something we talked about, the elders talked about this morning, where will we go ahead with the AGM this week or where will we postpone it until next week? And they left it up to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take the blame. But we are looking at um, seriously having it next Sunday rather than this Sunday because of the, the num numbers who are missing. We'll see what happens. We'll see if we get another 10 people arrive this morning somehow. And we may probably go ahead, but um, we'll probably have it next week because it's good to have as many possible, many people as possible here uh, for the AG when we do have it. So this, what's happening this week is well being Wednesday is on, on Wednesday obviously. Uh, Friday is the prayer meeting and the ladies' Bible study uh, starting at 10 a.m. and TPK at 3.15 p.m. Uh, I presume that was a typo, Robert. Right? It's a typo on the working there. I forgot to take it off, sorry. Yeah. We're sure we're coming in next Saturday. I mean, you're quite welcome to come up. We only had very, a few numbers for working there yesterday because of the, the rain and all the rest as well. So you're quite welcome to come up and do some work if you feel that way inclined as well. Um, and that's probably it. Two birthdays. I think I'll see what else is there. Hey, Jim. It's next week at this stage. And once again, church rosters. Um, if you haven't had a chance to put your name down on any of the rosters, um, you didn't see me because uh, we certainly, certainly could use a few more people on the on the rosters at this stage. And my Bible studies, picked them high prayer groups, so keep that in mind. It's always great that Margaret takes time to uh, send those through to us. Uh, two birthdays, uh, top of one, and of course my wife Heather next Saturday. <laughs> this is why we certainly wouldn't be having a working week. Okay, well let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for the rain. We know it does cause problems and um, possible danger for some people, so we ask that you watch over them. It's really great to see uh, Wild Game and Dams completely full and the most of the, the dams in this area are also getting close, uh, if not already falls really. So we thank you and praise you for the rain. What do we need um, for our uh, dams and for the helping things to grow as well and we we pray for um for Papua and i pray for heather we do thank you for these two we thank you they both um, are your uh, believe in you and and that uh, you love them and you take care of them and we ask that you continue to help them to continue to grow in your love and your maturity day by day. doesn't matter what age we are for that. So we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Joshua is going to talk to us about TPK. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Good Uh, the mission spot for TPK uh, is uh, Helen sitting in the back. Um, we started, how long ago we started? A long time ago. And uh, Helen is getting old and he, she retired. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. We, we started and we continue on. And from last year we started a uh, slightly different format. Uh, we do a bit of a tutoring, and uh, we have a Bible talk, and we have a games. And this term, this year, and term one, that we decide, okay, let's go ahead, because um, all like you know, COVID restrictions getting easy, easier, and, and we started, then uh, we're getting good numbers. And actually, um, the highlight is 
that my highlight for the TPK is the junior kids that who went to um, what do you call kids club, they become junior leaders in the TPK. So they come and helping the little ones and uh, mentoring them. And also, uh, definitely uh, give the Bible talk uh, full of interesting things and talking about Jesus and, and that's great. And, and uh, the, the mentor, I'm sorry, the tutoring person is looking after it and Bible talk definitely is looking after it. I'm looking after the game part, which is really, really hard. <laughs> Keep up with all the younger kids and running around. Um, so, so that's what we are doing. And I made just a little uh, video clip and, and I'd like to show you. So can you turn off the light? Even we have a Spider-Man visit, so that's, 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 that's great. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know who Spider-Man was, but that's a secret, okay? Um, Stephanie, would you say something about... Great, let's pray for the TPK. Dear God, we thank you for um, the little ones in our church and pray for um, the kids from our church and from the community. Lord, time get together, uh, learning about you and, and having fun together. So Lord, I ask your um, guidance and, and the strength for the leaders and the junior leaders and, and the little ones we continue to meet and continue to learn about you more and more, Lord. So Lord, we thank you for this uh, opportunity that you've given to us that we will uh, look after it and we will water it and it will continue to grow uh, by your grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jackie's going to read us our first Bible reading, which is Isaiah chapter 5, verses no, 1 to 7. Sorry, Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. Oh, it is too. Sorry. <laughs> My apologies.
Jackie's coming out. I just want to tell you something about Cornerstone too. If you don't know what a Cornerstone is, I'll tell you later if you come up. But at the back of Burke, literally, uh, there was a, not a Bible college, but it was like a Bible training school. And uh, it used to have a lot of people go there, people that you probably even know. Uh, Colin Buchanan's one of them. And I had the pleasure to be able to go out there for many years. And it was just closing down as a, uh, probably start of the century, about 2000. And the, the people out there were just fabulous. There was still probably about 20 people out there. And they were just studying. And it was really nice in that it wasn't a wonderful building built with uh, bricks. It was all demountable buildings and all the furniture was second hand. And it was just a fabulous place and a really nice place in that it was out in the middle of nowhere. There was two campuses. There was another one a little bit further up on a bore called Pirabor. And that's where uh, a school was also built, uh, primary and high school for many years. And um, yeah, the cornerstone being the strongest part of the building. And this was it too. Uh, they also had uh, other campuses, uh, at Cootamundra and other places where they had the people that went there that didn't cost them anything. They just had to work for their their tuition. Uh, they'd work on farms and uh, all that sort of stuff through the day and then do their study in the evening and night. So the Cornerstone, very strong place, but it's just a shame that this particular place um, closed down. But the buildings are still there. Jackie, would you like to... As you can see, the readings from Isaiah 5, 1 to 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a, a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O oh inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, Judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for, for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I do what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, it shall not be pruned or hoed and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. May the Lord bless this reading from his holy word. Thank you, Jackie. I'll just pray for the offering, this is the offering time, let's come to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come here this morning, we thank you that we can give back some of the things that you uh, allow us to be able to uh, provide for our families, but uh, give back to the church, give back to people that are in need of um, these, uh, these things, and or mostly for the running of the church, and we thank you that we can... Um, uh, earn these uh, uh, gifts to be able to give back. And we thank you in your name. Amen. Our next song is Rock of Ages.
what a beautiful physical world we live in. A lot of those first photos reminded me, the sheer cliffs reminded me of uh, uh, the mountains out around Coonabarabran, out uh, in the uh, Warren Bungles. And it's a beautiful part of the world. It's now time for the children's talk. Thank you, Robert. Okay, I have a question for you. What are signs for when we see signs up around the place? Why do we have signs up around the place? What do they do for us? Direction, Direction. Direction. yes, where to go. What was that? Oh. All right, well, let's see if we can work out some. Now, these are some street signs, so we'll test which of the kids are ready to drive, okay? We'll see which ones are ready to go. All right, who knows what that one is? Roundabout, just call them out if you know. Ten, exactly right. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, we've got some people ready to drive. How about this one? All right, how about this one? Um, four, five, 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 it says one way, but which way? Two way. <laughs> Okay, so there are some fairly, um, well, slightly confusing signs out there. Um, but here's the question. What should you do when you see one of those signs? Yep. Like any of those signs, what should you do? Do what it says. Do what it says, exactly right. Ready to drive, he's good to go. Yeah, we should do what it says. What happens if we don't do what the sign says? What might happen if we don't do what the sign says? Crash, exactly right. We will have a crash and we will have an awful mess if we don't do what the sign says. Well, the Bible is actually full of signs and signs that point to Jesus. In the Old Testament, some of those signs were people, prophets, people who told the people all about Jesus and the stories in the Old Testament and the places and the people, all of the things going on in the Old Testament are like signs. And they are pointing us to Jesus. And as you go into the New Testament, they tell us more about what we need to know to follow Jesus. They're really important signs, far more important than street signs. Signs that tell us about Jesus. And so my big question for you, as you hear about those signs in church, in Sunday school, in scripture, mum and dad, wherever you hear about those signs... Here's the big question. You have two choices. Are you going to listen to those signs or are you going to ignore those signs? Listen. Exactly right. Well done. All right, let's pray and then um, Junior Sunday School, you're heading off in a minute. Father, we thank you that your word tells us everything we need to know about Jesus. Father, thank you from the very beginning of your Bible. There are signs pointing us to Jesus. Help us to see those signs, help us to understand those signs, and most importantly, help us to follow those signs so we can be the people you want us to be. In your son's name, amen. Thanks, Robert. That was really good. Enid is now going to come up and read us our second Bible reading. From Mark 12, 1 to 12. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower, and leased it to tenants, and went into another country. When the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent them to another servant, and they struck him on the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed. And so with many others, 
some they beat, some they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son, finally sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir, come let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him, and they threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owners of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it's marvellous in our eyes. And they, seeking to arrest him, but feared the people, for they perceived that he had told the parable against them, so they left him and went away. We'll come to a time of prayer now. If uh, a couple of people would pray, and then I'll finish at an appropriate time. There's many things to pray about today, probably with the weather being on the top of it, and all the other things that are happening in our world. Let's pray. Precious God, we come here this morning to sing your praises and to hear your word. And uh, we thank you for those that uh, have prepared the church for us this morning. All those that do the things behind the scenes. That uh, we thank them for the work that they do in your name. Father, we also thank you especially for the rain that's happening now. And we do pray that it is also falling in areas that really need it. We thank you for the blessings you bestow upon us. And we thank you, Lord, that um, you will guide us as we move about on the roads, as they're starting to break up from the rain, and that you will help us to drive carefully and look up, look over and look after other people that are sharing that with us. Lord, we thank you for the, the children, the, the little ones from TPK. What a great ministry that is. We also thank you, Lord, for the other ministries that are happening in our church. We pray for our meeting next week as we uh, talk about the business of the church and, the, and its future. We also thank you, Lord, for those that um, are go out for you in the mission fields and, and just do pastoral care in our own backyard. 
We pray that you will continue <coughs> to help them, guide them and strengthen them as they do this work for you in your name. So Father, as we come to you this morning, we thank you that uh, you are there guiding us and that we thank you that you have made this beautiful world that we live in and that uh, we're probably not looking after as well as we should. We thank you for these things in your name. Amen. I'll ask Joshua now if he'll come out and preach to us on the Servant King 29. Let's pray. Uh, dear Father, we thank you for the passage that we read. Lord, it is a straightforward passage actually today. Um, give us wisdom that we be able to follow what you say to us uh, with our um, commitment. And uh, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you remember this? That I say that last week? The word of God never become yours until you practice it for yourself. JJ. That's me. <laughs> um, last week I uh, went to see the neurology. I shared uh, these things with uh, my uh, elders this morning, just before the service and when we pray. Last Wednesday um, I went to see my annual visit, my neurologist. Then, then my, um, that's that was actually the longest record time to wait, uh, about three hours actually waiting. And when I look at the waiting room, I complain because so many different patients and suffer from MS. And um, then I got the appointment and in front of me, the lady, and come and say, like, can I come and I, I need to go by three. So, so okay. She go in and I had to wait one and a half hours when she sees the neurologist. That happens. I can understand that feeling. They want to ask her questions, they want to hang on to it. And, and all those questions, what she said was, three o'clock I have to come out and I have to see something. Then I went there in the room and the neurologist says that basically your MRI shows nothing different from previous one. So last couple of three years, it's so all the consistent and same. So you don't have a trouble as long as that what's in your brain remains as it is, you're fine. So it took only 10 minutes. So waiting three hours to see the urology 10 minutes and come out. And I saw the lady actually who said um, she has to go out by three and she was wandering around on the street. Then I realized that she manipulated um, the, the receptionist and the nurse that I have to go. Then I was thinking, the world we're living in, whether you are healthy or not, that's a people. We manipulate people to get what I want. Then that's, I don't blame her. That's a discouraging thing, but I don't blame her. But the, when I look at my elders this morning, actually, I thought, what on earth these guys come and serving people the way that it is? It is, it is unbelievably different between the world and the church that the leaders doing in here serving and all that. And I'm talking about you, the people in here. Why is that? Because we follow Jesus. We know that Jesus is the answer. That makes a whole lot different. Just think about the way that you live now today. If there is no Jesus in you, would you be sane? Would you be sane? No, you all live differently. So, the Word of God never become yours until you practice it for yourself. Why Jesus say that to us? Like, if you want to follow me, take up the cross. Why Jesus say that to us? It is to experience the authority of Jesus. Jesus wants to give us a lot more than actually what we think and what we want. If we let him come to our heart, obey what he said, actually. We can achieve what we meant to achieve as a human, proper human, the way that God created in the Garden of Eden. As Jesus redeemed us, we can be the true human. 
not a selfish, evil desire person. Knowing Jesus makes us incredibly rich in experience with God, about God, in every perspective of our life, the way that we live. So it is not like a trust game. The whole process of me coming to Tamil, I shared it many times, I wouldn't do that now. Then I was thinking that if I didn't obey that uh, calling and hold the procedures of what I was facing, I never had a chance to meet all of you and incredibly rich experience that I have and the spiritual growth that I have for the last 10 years. So what I've experienced now is beyond my expectation. And God talking to me, my heart, whispering me and say to my conscience, well done, that is, my, that is the way my boy to live. Have you heard about that from God? Well done, that is the way my children to live. So can you see the principles of our life as a Christian? And if you ask me how you know that Jesus is the answer for your life as your Savior, if you ask me that question, I will answer like this. Whether you follow Jesus or not, there is a moment that you have to kneel your knees and confess that to Jesus, you are my God and my Lord. And I believe that God gives chances to us equally. Every single person has that chances. Then, if you have that chances, what would you do? What would you say? I pray that actually this morning, you are genuine about your faith in Christ. Agnostic people. Um, I made a spelling mistake last week when I showed that. But uh, that can happen. <laughs> Agnostic people, we know that. Mark 11 um, says that they discussed, they, the religious leaders and elders and all that they discussed about what Jesus said at the end. Do you know what they say? We do not know. We do not know. They discussed. And the conclusion was, we don't know. Of course they know the answer. But they don't admit it. They don't want to admit that John's baptism is from heaven. And they're not brave enough to say that he wasn't either because they're afraid of the people and the popularity and the support. So what is the background of the position? We don't know that agnostic positions. Is this the result of a serious reason study of the evidence about Jesus? They study seriously about Jesus and they say we don't know? I don't think so. It is like when children are in trouble, they say, I don't know. Of course, children, they know. They don't want to be in trouble. So that's why they say, I don't know. So these people, they already made up their mind about Jesus. And what they're going to do? What they want to do? To kill Jesus is the mission for them. Today's passage is about Jesus revealing their hearts and talking to them in a parable again. And God is a God of second chance. God gave us a chance again, and they were having another chance to get it right. And Jesus uses Isaiah 5, the parable of vineyard, and talking about them, Israel. And they know it. Jesus is talking to them. Isaiah, as Jesus using Isaiah 5, so from verse 4, one more were there, was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done yet, not done in it. When I looked for it to yield graves, why did it yield wide graves? And now I will tell you what I, what I will do my, to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hold. And the briars and the thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds 
that the rain no rain upon it. And the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, the man of Judah, and his pleasant planting, and he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for the righteousness, but behold, an outcry. This parable is the same line with cursing the fig tree in Mark 11 that we looked at, and it is the same message. But more, spec more specifically this time, it is talking to them directly, talking to their hearts, using Mark um, chapter 12. So 12, 12 says that they were seeking to arrest him, Jesus, but he, the people, for they perceived that he, he had told the parable against them. So can you see that? They know that Jesus is talking to them. They perceived, they perceived that he had told the parables against them. So they left and went away instead of confess, instead of kneel down and say sorry. The vineyard is God's people, his chosen people. They're supposed to serve God as God called them. But what they do? All through Old Testament, we know that. They shouldn't know how God led them. They shouldn't know how God guided them. They shouldn't know they, how God protected them. However, they refused to listen to God. First, through the prophets. If you think of Isaiah, he was a torn in half. He died. Zechariah, he was stoned to death. And the last the prophets, John the Baptist, do you know what happened to him? What they've done to him? So this is a story of what Jesus said to them from Mark chapter 12, verse 1. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it, the dug a pit for the wine press and the build a tower, and the leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season came, he, went a, he sent a servant to the tenant to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. They took him and beat him and sent him away and pretended, <clears throat> talking about prophets. And verse 4, again he sent to them another servant and he struck him on the head and the treated him shamefully. And verse 5, he sent another and another and him they killed. So they made, they, so many others, some they beat, some they killed. And again, and again, and again, and again, again. The message from the prophets is repent, come back to God. They refused again, again, beat them up and kill them. And finally, verse 6, we can see, he had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, they will respect my son. And this was the message of John the Baptist in Mark 1. Do you remember that when Jesus was baptized? And after that, in those days Jesus came from Nazareth into of Galilee and was baptized by John in Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open. That's the message of John the Baptist. The Spirit descending on him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. Jesus finally came into the vineyard. And this was the message of John the Baptist. So, so was John's baptism from man or from heaven? They knew it. The people knew it. But they, they said, we don't know. So what are they going to do next? God's son came into the vineyard. What do they supposed to do? Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. What would you do? What would you do? It's the same thing. If Jesus came to you, what would you do? Jesus is exposing their hearts again again and Jesus is giving them another chance verse 7 but those tenants say to one another this is the heir come 
let us kill him. And the inheritance will be ours. And that's exactly what they plan to do. While Jesus is exposing their hearts. To kill Jesus is their mission. Then, what then the owner of the vineyard will do? What God is going to do? So Mark 8, 9, 12, sorry, 8, 9. They took him and they killed him and they threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. And when Jesus said to others, actually Matthew's Gospel has the same story and Matthew's Gospel give us more details. So let's look at that, Matthew 21. So if you're looking at from verse 41, they say to him, he will put those watches to a miserable death to let it let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruit in their season. They had a plenty of chances to repent. They refused. So what happened to them? We all know that AD 70 temple was destroyed and never built again until this time. But the gospel of Jesus goes to the end of the world. How that happened? And Jesus made the story in verse 10 and 12. Have you not read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's, this was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in your eyes. They had murder in their hearts, the religious leaders of Israel, planning to kill Jesus, arrest him, and crucify him. This is what they did, actually. As they planned, their plan was successful. So what happened after the crucifixion? What happened after the crucifixion? And Peter actually says, and in Acts chapter 2, at the Pentecost, exactly the year after their plan was successful to kill Jesus, and Peter after that, one year after he stood up and preaching this one. Um, Acts 2.22 Man of Israel, hear this word. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in their midst. As you yourselves know, and this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. You can see that? God raised him and losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. And verse 36, let, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when you heard this, they were cut to their hearts and say to Peter, rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Then Peter said to him, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness, forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The same Peter says in, in 1 Peter 2, verse 7 and 8, So the honor is for you to believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and the stone of a stumbling, a rock of offense. The stumble, because they disobeyed the word, they were destined to do. God has, read, God has laid Jesus as a cornerstone of new temple. That is what God is doing now. God is building the new temple. Now, in new believers' heart, every day, every moment, God is building the new temple. Jesus is the cornerstone of every believer's heart. Not in this building, but, but through Jesus, God is building the temple in your heart. Through the scripture, that is where you can find everything about God through Jesus. 
This is history. This is what happened. Where we are heading. That is what God is doing now. Just interesting that what, are you, what you are so certain about something today, it is not going to be tomorrow. There is no eternal thing, forever things. We know that. The God is building the new temple and Jesus is the cornerstone. And you can meet in the person of Jesus. That is the way we meet God actually. Not through the animal sacrifice anymore, but through the sacrifice of Jesus. The Lamb of God who takes away our sin. Jesus is the cornerstone. So, get in the line with Jesus. He is the cornerstone. And come under the authority of Jesus. And build your life there. That's what it is, Christian life. And 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. And how you build that temple? Through Jesus. Because Jesus is the cornerstone. And the, the religious people of Israel refused to do that. And they say, I don't know. I don't know. Is this your answer? If it is your answer, you know what? Jesus becomes stumbling block for you. You will stumble over Jesus. And Jesus is the cornerstone which you can build your life upon. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus yet? Are you with Jesus? This is what all matters for your life at the end of the day. I told you the story that when I was sucking into that unconscious, passing out for 10 seconds, I saw that. What matter is not everything. What matter is only Jesus. I love my wife, but at the time, no. When you face Jesus on the judgment day, I don't think I, my wife will speak for, him, for me. And Jesus will listen to her. Without Jesus, without Jesus, what is your life? What is your life if there is no love of Jesus? It's bad news actually. If your life, if your life haven't built your temple in Jesus. I think this is another uh, JJ saying. If you, haven't, if you have nothing to say to Jesus now, He has nothing to say to you on Judgment Day. Maybe I will put on the screen next time, next week. If you have nothing to say to Jesus now, He has nothing to say to you on Judgment Day. That's the summary of the sermon. I will repeat one more time, I will pray. If you have nothing to say to Jesus now, He has nothing to say to you on Judgment Day. Let's pray. Dear God, please help us to build our life upon Jesus. Jesus is our cornerstone. We can build our life upon Him. Yes, the life is not going to be easy. And it's going to be challenged by like religious leaders in the Bible and try to mock us and anything like that. But we know that you want to give us eternal life. That's what all matters. Our life is like a blink. It's like a blink. <clears throat> Who cares about our life except you? So Lord, please give us wisdom and strength 
and protection that we will be able to carry our life with your son Jesus, then we will, we will be able to build our life upon your son Jesus. So we can build a beautiful temple that you can dwell in our heart. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua, <clears throat> we'll finish our final hymn, Come People of the Risen King.
That concludes our service. Um, uh, Ian is putting on morning tea for us this morning in the proper COVID way. Uh, so come and have a cuppa and enjoy us. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.